What I'm going to share with you now are the steps that I personally took to pass my own professional Scrum Master certification exam in five days. So let's get started. Hi friends, my name is Alvin and I'm here to help you grow in your career as a project manager so you can earn a higher income and make a bigger impact. Now if you aren't already familiar with it, the Professional Scrum Master Exam, also known as the PSM exam, provides you with a certification as a Professional Scrum Master. And it can be used as a stepping stone to land other roles as a Scrum Master or other project manager roles dealing with the Agile framework. So for me, the Professional Scrum Master Certification is a great way to showcase your knowledge of Scrum and in the future to be qualified for other opportunities in project management, especially if it involves the application of the Scrum framework and leading Agile projects. So if you're looking for an opportunity to invest in yourself and become even more fluent in the Scrum framework and to use this as a stepping stone in your career, this certification is perfect for you. This exam is taken completely online and you purchase it directly from the website scrum.org. Now, when you visit the Professional Scrum Master website, at the very end of the page, you'll see a button to buy the PSM-1 assessment. At the time of this recording, the exam costs $150 per attempt and after you pass it, you'll earn a digital badge along with your Scrum Master certification. You can take the exam anytime from the convenience of your home. Just keep in mind that anyone can take the exam and there are no educational requirements or formal training required. So again, this is really great news for all of us because it's very affordable and you don't need to spend hundreds of dollars into a boot camp or a training course. Now, in terms of what to expect on the Professional Scrum Master exam, it consists of only 80 questions. However, you only have 60 minutes to answer all 80 questions, and you need to score at least an 85% in order to pass the exam. What that means is that you can only miss 12 questions. That's right, you can only miss 12 questions. So honestly, it's a really challenging exam if you don't know Scrum at all or the fundamentals of what's covered in the latest version of the Scrum Guide. If you've already read the Scrum Guide, then you're off to a really great start. This exam tests many details, nuances, and your understanding of the Scrum framework as outlined in the Scrum Guide. So it's very important that you invest some time reading this, especially if you want to pass your exam on your first attempt. Do not just do a quick read through the Scrum Guide because you will not pass your exam if you don't read the Scrum Guide itself. If you only read it once, do not expect to pass your certification. Now, while the Scrum Guide is very easy to read and it only consists of 10 pages, you need to pay very close attention to detail in each sentence and each paragraph and truly understand what each concept means because the certification completely tests your understanding of Scrum. So just a fair bit of warning here because I want you to succeed and I want you to learn what works and what doesn't work so that you don't have to retake the exam all over again and spend another $150 all over again. So what I'm going to share with you now are the steps that I took to pass my own Scrum Master certification in five days. There's no need to try to pass this exam in one day. Seriously, give yourself at least a week to study for it and then take your exam on the weekend, maybe a Saturday or a Sunday. From my own experience, it will take you around 10 hours of studying even if you have zero experience with Agile. And I can confidently say that because this is how much time it took me to study and get ready for the certification. Don't think that you can pass this exam with only one or two hours of studying. You will not pass this exam in one day. Let me repeat that, okay? You will not pass your PSM exam in one day, especially if you have zero knowledge in Agile or the Scrum methodology. And that's why I recommend spending at least one week to study and prepare diligently for it. So going back to the format of the exam, answering 80 questions in 60 minutes and only missing 12 questions is actually really tough. The wording in the exam will throw you off and you're going to have to be very careful of the wording in each question. So to prepare for this exam, I recommend that you read the Scrum Guide at least once every single day up until the day of your actual exam. 
As I've mentioned previously, the exam is completely based off the scrum guide. So you need to dedicate at least 30 minutes to an hour reading and taking notes from this guide. Do not, let me repeat, do not underestimate how much effort it will take to understand the concepts. And that's why I emphasize spending time every single day reading the scrum guide and really taking the time to read through and understand every sentence and every single paragraph. You're going to uncover different things each time that you read through the scrum guide. So for example, there's a sentence underneath the scrum master portion of the guide that states, the scrum master is accountable for the scrum team's effectiveness. They do this by enabling the scrum team to improve its practices within the scrum framework. In here, it's the scrum master, not the product owner and not the team members themselves who are responsible for how effective the team is. So it's paying attention to these minor details and nuances throughout the scrum guide that will guarantee your success to passing your certification. The second resource I recommend is using what I like to call short practice quizzes, otherwise known as open assessments on scrum.org, because this is a very accurate and realistic indicator of what to expect on your exam. Keep in mind that you're likely to see several questions repeated over and over again, and that's completely okay. Get used to the style of the questions and how you'll be tested in your knowledge and what to expect. If you can answer these assessments 100% every time, then you're on the right path to passing your exam. I recommend taking the Scrum Open, the Product Owner Open, and the Nexus Open several times until you score 100% consistently and you feel very comfortable with the questions that you're being asked. The third resource I recommend is understanding every single term and definition inside the Scrum Glossary, which is found on scrum.org, and I'll include links in the description down below. Make sure that you understand every single term here, and for any terms that you're not familiar with, put this in your own exam log or a cheat sheet and study this on a daily basis. The fourth resource that I recommend is using a mock exam simulator to test your knowledge and to make sure that you're scoring at least 85%. The one that I personally use to pass my own exam is by M Plaza, and I'll include that in the link down below. By the way, did I mention that the Scrum exam is also open book? That means that you can cheat. What? 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 No, I'm just kidding. You should never ever cheat. But in all seriousness, the exam is open book, which means that you can reference your notes, the scrum guide, and your scrum glossary while you're taking the exam. But again, keep in mind that you're timed and you only have 60 minutes to answer all 80 questions. Now here's my advice when you're actually taking your exam. Plan to go through your exam at least two times. On your first run through, don't spend too much time on each question. Your goal here is to answer all the questions that you're 90 to 100% confident in and to go at a moderate to a fast pace. During your first run through, if you're not sure of an answer, flag it and move on to the next question. Make sure to use the process of elimination to eliminate any answers which are completely incorrect and focus on the one which makes the most sense. Have a piece of scratch paper available and write down all of the questions that you're not sure about. So once you're done with your first run through of the exam, now go back and review all of the questions that you flagged and that you marked down on your scratch paper. Remember that you can only miss a maximum of 12 questions. So you want to approach your second run much more carefully. So use this time to read each question very carefully because the wording can be tricky. Don't just jump immediately to the answer choices, but take the time to really read through the question understand it thoroughly, and make sure you choose the answer which best directly solves the question. If the question asks you to pick the two best options, make sure that you actually pick the two best answer options. If the question asks you which one is true or which one's false, make sure that the statement is actually 100% true or false and that there aren't any caveats or exceptions to what's being asked. So for every question that you flag, just really take the time to double check your answers and make sure that it actually answers the question that you're being asked. I say this because again, you can only miss 12 questions, so you need to pay close attention to detail. If you follow my recommended strategy, you should have at least 10 to 15 minutes left on your exam after your second run through. So if there's still time remaining, do one last final run through of your exam and double check all of your answers. Do me a favor and do yourself a favor 
by going through one by one all of your flag questions first and make sure that they're correct and then review the ones that are that you flagged previously. I recommend setting a goal to score as close to 100% as possible. That way, you're more likely to meet the minimum passing score of 85% and this shift in your mindset will guarantee you'll pass your exam. So again, do at least two run-throughs of your exam. In your first run-through, answer all of the questions at a moderate to a faster pace for all of the questions that you're at least 90% confident in. In your second run-through, take your time to go through the questions that you flagged and that you're not really sure of. Go at a slower pace here and really take the time to make sure that you choose the answer which best directly solves the question being asked. If there's still time remaining, do a final run through to double check all of your answers. To help you master Scrum even better, I recommend that you understand the Agile Manifesto. Watch this video next to understand the key principles of Agile and this will help you prepare for your Scrum Master Certification exam. Just click or tap the video on the screen and I'll see you on the inside.